we've got these, th- this voice in our minds that talks to us from the moment we get up to the moment we go to bed. <laughs> and it just, it never shuts up. Power to Live More with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organization, well being, energy, and resilience. I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello. My name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter and today Joe's interviewing Joanna Kleinman. With over 20 years of experience in therapy and life coaching, Joanna Kleinman, LCSW, is a nationally recognised expert in personal information. She is a best-selling author, life coach and host of the Dethroning Your Inner Critic podcast. During her group programmes and private coaching, Joanna guides her clients away from the comfort zones that keep them safe and small and into their authentic selves, the place where purpose, innovation and fulfilment live. Through her signature dethroning your inner critic online and in-person programmes and her unique mind method, Joanna's moment-to-moment interactions boldly model this shift firsthand. With equal parts heart-based presence and laser-sharp focus, she interrupts business as usual to help people to uncover deeply rooted blind spots, question what is held as the truth, and relentlessly step into their brilliance. Back to the studio. Today I'm interviewing Joanna Kleinman of Dethroning Your Inner Critic. Welcome Joanna, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me Joe. it's a pleasure. So start by telling us who you are, what you do, and crucially, where you do it. Yes. So uh, I am a psychotherapist, and I actually see people all over the world. So I, um, my, my practice has actually been uh, virtual even before the pandemic. Uh, Mm -hmm. I've been using Zoom for a while, and um, so it's my greatest, greatest passion um, to to just help people from all over the world. And where are you where, and where do you work? Yes. Yeah, so I, uh, I live right outside of Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for, uh, for a long time, I had uh, a practice just right here in my, in my town of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, and I, I've been a psychotherapist for about, oh, more than 25 years now. So, um, it, it was really interesting. Uh, the The shift started happening when I started speaking, um, and I actually um, became a speaker for this incredible uh, women's empowerment company uh, called Camp Powerment. And I was speaking um, in California, and I was speaking in Florida, and I was uh, speaking in New York. And um, so, you know, I obviously I, I started, you know, getting people from all over the country that wanted to work with me. And so it was a really um, it was a really interesting transition to be a psychotherapist serving people uh, all over the world before that was a thing. I had, mm-hmm. I had a lot to uh, figure out, a lot of trial and error. So um mm-hmm. Glad I did it before the pandemic, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it sort of came from from the speaking piece, but I think now a lot of people really get that you can do lots of things online that they perhaps might not have thought about in the past. But you know, I know myself. There are people who are doing sort of healing things who wouldn't dream of going online even now in the pandemic. They're just not working. Um, yes. How did how did that transition? happen for you, particularly when people weren't used to being patients, if you like, of somebody who was doing something online? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I think that, you know, I've, I've been in, I've been on my own personal um, transformation journey, right, for uh, probably, well, about 30 years now, okay, so I really developed an ability to 
connect with people because I just, I, I see, um, it, I, I just see that they're, we're, we're, we're all the same, right? We've got different stories. We've got different uh, experiences. We've got different circumstances, but fundamentally all human beings really struggle um, with the same inner stuff. And so it's, it's just, I, I, it's very easy for me to connect with people. Um, and so the transition was really not that hard because when you connect, you connect, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in person or, you know, or you're looking at somebody, um, on video, you know, when, when you, when you just kind of keep your heart open and you connect to that human being, um, it's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you said you've been on a personal development journey for, for 30 years. Have you yes. been a psychotherapist? So I can't even say it now. <laughs> a psychotherapist all along. Was that your initial training? It was, you know, uh, so when I, um, you know, so my mom is a brilliant psychotherapist and actually my, my, both of my parents, uh, kind of introduced me to, um, transformational thinking, right. In other words, looking at things from a different context, right. From a different perspective that would have you, um, just really see yourself and your life from a whole different perspective. So I grew up with that as a context. Mm -hmm. And I think um, really by the time I was about 14, I knew uh, that that is what I wanted to do with my life. I knew that that was, you know, I was put on the planet to be able to uh, show people how to think in a way that, has them create lives, uh, that they love. And, and that's just been my passion really for my whole life. Mm. Yeah. And when I introduced you, I just described you as, as, um, as being somebody from an organization, if you like, who um, is talking about dethroning your inner critic. And, you know, I'm sure that's had a sort of been a bit of a theme all the way through, because I I don't think that's anything new in terms of us having inner critics, but it's not probably how you would have described it, I presume, sort of 30 years ago. How is that? No. No. So the concept of dethroning your inner critic was actually born um, about five years ago. Yeah. And and this is after, you know, I, I'd been a, a psychotherapist for for my whole life and and really studying, right, what right? What, what really constitutes being a human being, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the whole concept of dethroning your inner critic is really um, born out of uh, really an understanding that we've got these, this voice in our minds that talks to us from the moment we get up to the moment we go to bed. (laughs) And it just, it never shuts up. And so many people, uh, you know, I think, I think culturally, right. We're taught that the way to feel good and the way to feel happy is to change the circumstances of your life. Mm -hmm. And what I was finding, right. Is that people would change the circumstances of their life, thinking that that was going to be the thing that was going to make them feel the way that they wanted to feel. Right. So they would lose the weight. They would get divorced. They would get married. They would have the kid. They would get the promotion. They would, you know, get the career, whatever it was. Right. And then they would, they would get there to what, you know, let's, let's say what is the top of the mountain. Right. And they would look around and they'd say, well, this is it. I, I still don't feel satisfied. Yeah. And so um, it was actually out of my, uh, you know, I the very first time I was invited to speak at, at Camp Powerment was when I came up with the concept of dethroning your inner critic. And it was in, it was in January of 2015. It was really just a workshop that I was delivering um, as part of, as part of the organization of Camp Powerment. Mm-hmm. And um it was just, you know, in, in, a, in a half hour workshop, right. People were, were coming up to me and, and saying like, you know, this whole idea of, of, you know, I don't have to get rid of the voice in my head. I don't have to quiet it or silence it or make it go away. That was like a game changer for people. Cause you know, 
that's the, that's really the crux of it, Mm. right? We've got this voice and it says the same thing to us that it's been saying since we were like six, right? It just lands in different areas of our lives. So we had the the seven-year-old version of, you know, let's say I'm not good enough and the 20-year-old version of I'm not good enough and the 40-year-old version of I'm not good enough. And really understanding that you are separate from that voice changes the way that you can live your life because why, because really, and, and you, I, I'm wondering if you, if you know this in your life, Joe, you know, when we're, when we are up to big things and big changes, that voice gets louder. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, how do you continue to step outside of your comfort zone and really design the life of your dreams while you have all the fear and all the doubt and all the what if and all the I'm not good enough and all the I can't and all the, you know, comparison and all the stuff that we do as human beings. Um, so the concept of dethroning your inner critic is a four step methodology that I created and it's called the mind method. That's really at the heart of dethroning your inner critic. Mm-hmm. And can I assume from the the, the phrasing used <laughs> that we're saying yeah. that uh, that it's still always there, but it's just not the king or queen of our heads? <laughs> yeah. that what the you got it. You got it. <laughs> you know, I I always say this. You know, for with my own inner critic, particularly as I'm up to big things, I have to dethrone my inner critic sometimes. You know, fifty times a day, <laughs> sometimes fifty <laughs> times an hour. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. That's yeah. exactly the 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 why I don't call this work silencing it, banishing it. You know, I call it dethroning it. Yes, yeah. And you've recently uh, written a book on the subject. I think of the same name. Is that right? Yes, it is. Um, the it's called dethroning your inner critic: uh, the four step journey from self doubt to self empowerment, and it outlines the entire methodology and practice of the mind method. Mm-hmm. Um, so M-I-N-D, right, isn't an acronym. So those are the four steps, the M-I-N-D. Isn't it wonderful when um, you can have steps that actually mean something that fit with what you're doing as well? It's just, just like my power. My power mm-hmm. is uh, productivity, organization, well-being, energy, and resilience. That's oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, it, isn't it the best? Yes, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> So uh, yeah, love love to to hear that. Um, and so tell us a bit about uh, how how this sort of affects people. I and mean, we we talk um, quite a lot about things like imposter syndrome, and people say, "Oh, everyone has that." And and some people think, "Oh, you know, people who are really successful and uh, you know senior people clearly don't have it." And then you you speak to them and you find that they do. Um, you know, we've all got this critic, presumably. Um, yeah. What sort of things can we be doing to, to stop it holding us back? Well, yeah. So I the, the biggest um, the biggest thing that really holds us back is the the feeling that our voice creates, right? So our voice, you know, says what it says, right? Who who are you to be doing this? And you know, whatever 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 that whatever that voice says for you. Yeah. And it is our thoughts that create our feelings, right? Mm -hmm. So we have all of these feelings of discomfort when that mind starts talking to us. If we can learn that that inner discomfort is nothing more than an inner vibration. In other words, your discomfort won't kill you. And so many people, the minute that we get uncomfortable, this is really the hard wiring of human beings, we don't want to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We want to feel good. We actually, as human beings, we're hardwired to seek out pleasure and avoid pain. So when we're up to really big things, what we're really doing is we've got to override our DNA, our biology, right? Our our primitive brains are hardwired to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. And so, so many people 
what, right? They, they have these big dreams and these big goals and these big ideas for what they want to create. And what they want to try to do is get rid of their discomfort and their fear and their doubt before they will take action. And this is why so many people, you know, live out their lives and they never realize their dreams. And so if you can just train yourself Okay, to sit in your discomfort. And, and, and here's how you do it. Okay. Fundamentally, the, the most powerful life that you can live is when you know the difference between you and the voice of your inner critic. So when it's speaking, that's not you. And when you know who you really are, and your inner critic starts saying, you know, you need to know more, you need to be more, you need to have more, you're not enough. You can recognize that. That's not me. That's the voice of my inner critic. And what you can do is teach yourself to, in that moment, what I call unhook from it, right? So it's screaming. You're experiencing the feelings. But what you're doing is you are aligning your actions with the life that you're designing. That's actually the D step of the mind method is design your life, right? M, M is meet your inner critic. I is investigate the indication signs, right? How do you know your inner critic is speaking to you? N is neutralize the never ending message because like I said before, it never goes away. Yeah. And D is design your life. So if you can be in the discomfort and yet take actions Actions are always going to give you the results of your life. Now, and, and again, I'm sure you know this. I know this, right? When, when we are creating a business, right? There is a crazy amount of failure, right? I have failed over and over and over and over and over again. And if my inner critic had anything to say about my failure, right? My inner critic would say, right, that's because you're not good enough. That's because you don't know this. And that's because you don't know that. And, and right, make me feel like I can't do it. But every action that I take shows me something, right? So every failure that I've had has actually propelled me further to my success because I learn from it. I say, oh, that didn't work, right? So what can I take from that? And how can I learn from that? And what's the very next step? And I, and I think that people, what people want is they want to know exactly what all the steps are, right? I need to know what the next five, 10 steps are to get me to where I want to be. And I don't agree with that. I think you just need to get quiet and still and look at what is the next step. So you take that next step and then life goes where it goes. Half the time life goes where we want it to. Half the time it doesn't. That's, that's for all of us. So you take that action and then it goes where it goes. If it goes where you want it to go, wonderful. If it doesn't go the way you wanted it to, you learn from it and then you take the next action. And you do this over and over and over and over and over, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, mm -hmm. repeat. Mm -hmm. And that's how all of a sudden here you are, you start living the life of your dreams because you're willing to take action in the face of discomfort. Yeah. So one thing I keep sort of reflecting on as we're talking is what the connection is between other people's criticism of you and your own criticism of you. I'm just, I've just, I was trying to sort of imagine what happens when other people say things to you and what you might do and how you might behave and how that's different to how you behave when yes. it's yourself. Yeah. There's something in that. <laughs> yep. Yep. So um, part of what our automatic inner critic is attached to, okay? Yeah. You can think, think about this for yourself. Our inner critic is attached to other people's judgments and opinions of us, right? Mm -hmm. So now, again, if we're looking at this, 
from a from a DNA biological perspective, right? If you think about us as cave cavemen and cave women, yeah. Um, we needed to be accepted by our tribe or else we died. Okay. But that was when we were living, right. In, in a tribe of, I don't, I don't know, 15, 30 people. Right. Yeah. Now in our modern world, right. How many people are on the planet? 8 billion people or something like that. Of course, not everybody is going to like us. Not everybody's going to love us. People are going to have opinions of us, right? So again, it's overriding that that DNA that and and being able to say when somebody has a judgment or opinion, I don't need for other people to like me, love me, choose me, value me in order for me to feel at peace with myself. Mm -hmm. Because really what this all boils down to is when you learn to think in a way about yourself, okay, that has you falling in love with yourself, literally falling in love with yourself. In other words, I don't mean that from a bragging perspective, right? I mean that you know who you are you accept your faults and your flaws because we all have them. You and 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 you just know how to think in a way where your love of yourself is not conditional. In other words, so many people say, well, you know, I can't love myself until, right? Like until I get the love of my life, until I lose the weight, until, you know, um, until I become a mother, until I, until I am a great mother, you know, I mean, there's so many things where, uh, that, that we put conditions right on our ability to really like who we are and be at peace with ourselves. Hmm. And again, so when you, when you learn to think in a way where you cultivate a different relationship with yourself, you can be with other people's judgment and criticism. You know, you might not like it, right? Of course, we all prefer, I certainly prefer to be liked and loved, but I have, I've cultivated a relationship with myself such that when somebody judges me or criticizes me, it doesn't bring me down. Hmm. And that relationship with myself, right? That's, that's, I am ongoingly cultivating that, right? I didn't always have that relationship with myself, not at all. I had to learn to think in a way, and this is right. I, listen, I created dethroning your inner critic because I I, I needed this the most. (laughs) It was my worst (laughs) critic, right? So with everybody that I, you know, um, that I work with, you know, and I'm very open about this, that, um, right. This is an ongoing practice for all of us. Yeah. So I'm doing it right alongside everybody else. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's some things where it's quite easy to ignore that inner critic about and other things where it seems almost impossible. And I guess everyone mm. has that sort of, um, continuum of, of, uh, criticism, some, some of which we can push away and some of which we struggle to push away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and when, and when you say, you know, sometimes it's impossible to, to push away, um, the things that are the hardest to push away is because what, what's getting pressed, right. Almost like an, like an inner button is that never ending message, uh-huh. right? In other words, somebody says something. Okay. And really what's getting what's getting triggered for us is that deep pain hmm. and that's really where our, where our inner critic originates from right every single human even if you even if you haven't experienced trauma or you know you grew up in a in a, in a very supportive loving home we all have this moment and we don't even have to know what it is but it's a moment when we're young very young where all of a sudden we feel in some way not okay. Hmm. And and it's because, you know, we're so young when we're making, we're trying to make sense of the world and how we're loved and how we're valued and how we fit in. 
And so a little kid doesn't understand, right? You know, mom's yelling at me for spilling milk because she just got into a fight with dad or, right, she's stressed at work. We don't know that when we're children. So we assign meaning uh, because we are young children. And the meaning that we assign because children are, right, just by nature, egocentric. So they ass we assign meaning that, oh, this, this is happening because there's something in some way wrong with me. I must not be good enough. I must not be loved enough, right? And then that becomes the lens through which we see the world. We don't even realize it. It's so unconscious, yeah. right? So we're like going through life. Now, here's the crazy, here's the crazy thing, Joe. That voice is actually there to protect us. So what I mean by that is that, you know, let that little child experiences that pain. And then it's like, again, this is all unconscious. The child does not want to feel that pain. Remember, we, we want to avoid pain and seek pleasure. So the child quickly figures out who, what do I need to do? And who do I need to become such that I never feel that pain again? Yeah. Right. It's, it, right? It's where perfectionism is born. It's it, right. And every time we've got somebody that judges us or we fail at something or we're not, you know, as good as the other person, that's that inner critic that says, oh, you know, you know, you need to do this better. You need to be different because in a backwards way, it's a way to avoid pain. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. So how do you work with your clients? What do your days look like? Well, um, there's, a, there's a lot of ways that I work with people. So I do work with people one-on-one, -on -one, um, but I also have groups of uh, women uh, in a program that I created called Mastering Your Mind. And um, so it, and, and I love, love, love the women that I work with. Now, I, individually, I work with men and women. And uh, possibly at some point, I will be creating inner critic uh, groups for men. But what I find and listen, some of your listeners who are men may disagree with me, but what I find is that men um, often are not open to discussing uh, their vulnerability with other men mm -hmm. as much as women are. Um, so I love, love, love the one-on-one -on -one work that I do with men um, and, and women, of course, <laughs> too. But I created um, a, a six-month program for women to come together. Um, it's a very structured program. And so there's different modules and right and, and all different techniques. But the beautiful thing that happens when women come together and share uh, their insights and their vulnerabilities is that we all learn and grow from each other and we all learn together. Um, and it brings the ahas and the insights uh, to a completely different level. Yeah. So those are the two ways that, um, that I work with people. And, um, and, and in 2021, I'm going to be creating a program for entrepreneurs, specifically for um, entrepreneurs. How do you think in a way that gets your business uh, right? That like really, you know, doubles or triples your business all through really understanding how to use your mind to take action to get you there. Mm -hmm. And how does that manifest in terms of sort of day-to-day -day activity? How do you go about organizing yourself, making sure you get done the things you need to get done? I mean, putting programs on, it's got quite a lot of moving parts, hasn't it, in order to um, get that stuff out there? Yes. Yeah, it does. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I think that, you know, I really – take the time out of my schedule for, um, you know, I have my own, I have my own podcast. So I uh, actually schedule time to uh, write and record my, my podcast episodes. And I, I schedule time 
to uh, really write out the modules of the programs um, that, right? So, so it's interesting. Um, you know, I'm in creation mode again, you know, and uh, I, I just, uh, you know, in, 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 um, in 2020, I launched my very first book. Um, it's called, right. It, it, we already mentioned that. And, um, so, and that was, that was just huge for me, right. It had been, it, it really had been a, like a, a 20 year <laughs> book in the making. And so it, it was really one of my greatest accomplishments and, um, I'm really super proud of it. And then what happened is right after I launched the book, my inner critic grabbed my, my mind again, right. Yeah. And literally the day after the book launch. So you want to, you want to get this. This is so crazy. My book, uh, became the, the day of the book launch, it became a number one international bestseller. Okay. So here I was like over the moon. I couldn't even believe it. And then within four days, I woke up with, uh, an, uh like, an elephant on my chest, right? Because my inner critic was saying, well, okay, so you did that, but now, you know, what's next? And yeah. and what's, where are you taking your business and how are you going to get there? And how are you going to create this? And right. Yeah. And so it just, this is the thing. It doesn't matter, you know, I, what you do in your life, right? It just, that fear, that doubt, it never goes away. And for me, first of all, the only way that I've accomplished everything that I've accomplished so far is because all along the way, I just keep dethroning my own inner critic. Yeah. And what I know is that, you know, it'll be with me forever. It's never going away at every level that I'm up to creating the next big you know, the, the next big step, right? It feels like I'm jumping off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if we can just get used to that feeling, right? As, as, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, right? We we're here, we are living the life of our dreams and the cost, right? The cost of living the life of your dreams is a lot of the time you're not comfortable, but a lot of the time you're elated, and you're blowing your own mind because you can't even believe what you've accomplished. And it's sort of this pendulum and you just got to get used to the pendulum. And I'd rather have, so I would rather be uncomfortable going for my dreams than be uncomfortable because I'm not. Yeah. So if I'm going to be uncomfortable anyway, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I think not going for your dreams personally is so much more uncomfortable than going for them. Yes. And so that's the thing. We can use our minds to get used to the discomfort and be in the discomfort and continue to create the life of our dreams. And that's where the elation comes in. Mm. So I talk a lot about um, within my um fundamentals the sustained fundamental about routines and rituals and creating these sort of regular actions that can help you to you know do whatever it is you're looking to do have you got some tips around sort of regular routines regular rituals that that really help with this stuff mm. well there's a few things well first of all for me um the fundamentals for me okay so so first, the basics are sleep, uh, proper nutrition, and exercise, right? That's mm -hmm. the fundamentals. Yeah. And then if I go one step above that, it is making sure that I'm connected to my husband and my children, okay? So those, right? And, and, my, and my friends, really, right? So those are the things, I would say those basics are the things that really feed my soul, and if those things are all good, um, then I'm good, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And then, but the other thing that I will say is that, um, you know, I have, I have a team and it, it and right. And it's, and it's sort of a, a lot of it, a lot of my team 
it does very, it, you know, things very similar to, to what you do in your business. Yeah. And, you know, the investment in my team, okay, while it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a decent amount of money. It has me being able to do what I love and then outsourcing what I don't love and what I'm not particularly good at to other people. Yeah. And so in, right. And, and because I'm investing this money, right. It, the mindset that I have about it is that it is, it is a, not only is it a, is it a a, a beautiful thing to be able to invest in it, but it's really a self-loving and self-honoring thing for me that I'm, I'm investing in other people so that I can design a life where I'm just doing what I love. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not interested in a, in a, in a stressful, well, I'm not interested in a stressful life. I'm interested in an uncomfortable life because I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone, <laughs> but not in a stressful life to the point where I'm doing things that don't fuel my soul. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what about those days where it all goes horribly wrong for you? I, I'm wondering, I asked this question of all my guests and I'm wondering if there's um, a sort of nuance to this because of the whole inner critic thing as, as well. What, yes. what do you do on those days where it all goes horribly wrong? How do you deal with those? Oh my gosh. Which happens frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I have three kids and yeah, I mean, I, honestly, yes. Yeah. So, so um, the way that I see life, okay, I, I, I see life as a river and life essentially goes where it goes. And like I said, half the time life goes where we want it to and half the time it doesn't. Yeah. And if we can just be in the trust. Okay. Like really knowing that there is something outside of ourselves that's flowing life. Right. And and if you even look back on your life, you can see, right. You've, you've had these moments where, Oh my God, like I'm so devastated. You know, this, I can't believe this relationship broke off or, um, I can't believe I was fired. Like I was fired at 26. Right. I can now see, right. I'm 50. I look back like, thank God I was fired. Right. But (laughs) you know, so, so if you can just get into the trust that life is not meant to be perfect, right. That half of life isn't going to go the way that you want it to. And the real beauty of life is how are you going to think in a way that creates calm and peace and balance when the half of life doesn't go the way that you want it to? And can you trust that if you just relax into the river and flow and just keep looking at, okay, what's the next step? I'm going to take just the next step. And then after I take that step, I'm going to take the next step. And then after that, I'm going to take the next step. And then pretty soon, right, you'll recognize that you don't need to worry so much because everything ends up working out even when we think it's not. Yeah. And we can flow, right? We can just relax and flow. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just, just reflecting, contemplating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, you know what it is, Joe? It's the surrender of the attachment. Our inner critic minds are very attached. We yeah. have a lot of attachment to the results, right? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's really the crux of dethroning your inner critic is you take the actions while you while you actively practice letting go of the attachment mm. to where that action goes. Yeah. And that's how you enjoy the journey. Right? Because we've all we've all heard that before, you know, life is a journey and not a destination, but it's really true. If we get too attached to the destination, we miss out on the beautiful journey that we're on. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yep. 
So talking about beautiful journeys, um, my last question, what about those days where you get to live more? And that's where I say you get to do more of the things that you want to do and less of the stuff that you don't want to do. What do those days look like for you? Where I get to do more of the stuff that I, that I love to do. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, I would say, I would really say my perfect day is interacting with clients right? Where I'm just watching their lives unfolding in the most beautiful, magnificent, extraordinary ways. And it's all because um, they're using their minds to create it. Mm -hmm. So, and and, and, I mean, really, it is, it it brings me no greater joy. I mean, I just, um, uh, you know, I just, my birthday was yesterday. And, uh, I, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I, um, I had a group last night and I, and I said to the women, I was like, there is, you know, I want to celebrate my birthday with you guys. Right. Because it just, you know, just watching how they are fundamentally different humans than they were six months ago. Yeah. They are living different lives and there, and it, there just brings me no greater joy than to see that, um, you know, whether it's in my groups or in individual, um, working with individuals and, you know, so if I can do that during the day and then hang out with my family at night, I'm good. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect day. (laughs) Lovely. Thank you, Joanna. It's been great interviewing you. Tell people how they can find out more about you and get in touch. Yes. Thank you. So, um, I have a podcast, uh, called dethroning your inner critic. You can find that, uh, wherever you find podcasts. Yeah. Um, my book, uh, which is dethroning your inner critic, the four step journey from self doubt to self empowerment is on Amazon. Uh-huh. And, um, my website dethroning your inner critic. Um, you know, if people want to, uh, schedule a time to speak with me, I offer, you know, free, uh, half hour consultations. You can book that on my website. And then of course I'm on, um, Instagram and, and, uh, Facebook under, uh, dethroning your inner critic. Brilliant. Thanks, Joanna. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure. All this information is available in the show notes. If you go to power to live more.com, forward slash in this case 197 then you'll find them there and this week I want to talk a little bit about decluttering if you've listened before you'll know that this month I've been focusing on my second fundamental of simplify and the topic of decluttering fits very nicely within that and for me decluttering is about looking at three areas it's about physical mental and digital And as with most of the things that I teach and talk about, I think it's a really personal thing. So I personally can't work if I'm in a really messy environment. So my desk or my office or my house or whatever um, needs to be tidy and organized in order for me to feel sort of focused, productive and able to do the things that I need to do. So as a result of that, my office and my desk are always really tidy and I do at the end of every day put things away and you know I I do sort of that sort of that regular maintenance stuff if you like but other people can work in a big mess and not even notice it or you know in a (laughs) semi-mess and you know that's fine there's no one rule that says you've got to have you know nothing on your desk and therefore your life will be perfect you know obviously it doesn't work that way but do be aware of how you're feeling and how you work and how you focus when you're surrounded by stuff and clutter. And if it causes you an issue, then obviously focus on the concept of decluttering and making that atmosphere cleaner and clearer for you. I personally think it's important for all of us to think about these things. But as I say, I think how much you do and how clear and clean everything needs to be is very much a personal decision. So what do I mean by mental decluttering? Well, I think it's really important to get everything out of your head that you need to do. So a bit like you have an inbox for your email or an an intro for your post, I think you need to get everything out of your head into some other repository 
rather than it swimming around and getting in the way and sort of nagging you to do stuff. That stuff never goes away. Clearly, your brain keeps, you know, whirring away and reminding you of things anyway. And, you know, how often have we put stuff onto our to-do list or written it down to remind ourselves or said to somebody, don't let me forget to do X, Y, Z. And then we just remember anyway. But, I, you know, I think that's part of the process of making that happen. Uh, so we don't forget everything. We don't take everything out and end up with a blank mind, obviously. But having a way of storing all that stuff that you need to do and that you need to think about in the future so that you don't have to keep thinking about it in the now is really important and really helpful in terms of your ability to then focus and get on and do the things that you need to do now in the moment. So how are you getting that stuff out of your head? And, you know, one of the ways it uh, sometimes manifests for people is people who struggle to get to sleep because they're worrying about things. Often, if you keep a, a pad of paper and a pen next to your bed, then you can actually write down the things that you're thinking about, that you're worrying about, And that sort of gets them out of your head and enables you to sort of relax and get calm and and go to sleep. One of the things I do, as you probably know, if you're a long time listener of the podcast, I'm really not into pen and paper, unlike probably 90 percent of the people who come on the podcast. Uh, But I'm, you know, really digital through and through. I rarely use paper, but I do use the same principle of getting things out of my head uh, by using my Alexa. So if I'm about to go to sleep, the light's off and I suddenly think, oh, I need to remember to do something, then I just speak to, and I'm not going to say it again because she's already spoken to me once (laughs) whilst I've been trying to record this, Um, but I say her name and then I uh, ask her to add the thing to my to-do list or the other thing I've got set up is to my shopping list. And all I've done is I set up automation using the functionality that my to-do list gives me And uh, it's enabled me to tell her (laughs) to add the thing to one of those two places and it automatically happens. So it just means that in that moment when I suddenly realise, oh, I need to do something or I forgot to do that or I need to buy such and such, I can just add that to a list and then I can forget about it again. So that's what I mean when I talk about mental decluttering. And then the final thing is digital decluttering. And that's a bit like in your office, you know, that if you've got loads of stuff on your desktop or you've got loads of folders and files and goodness knows what else on your computer and you can't find anything even with really good search capabilities nowadays, then you probably need to do a bit of organising. And it also goes into your work processes and your systems that if you have a certain way of doing something and you keep items in a certain place on your computer, it can really help to do whatever you need to do quicker, more effectively and more efficiently. So for example, with my podcast, I have a separate folder on Dropbox that I share with my VAs that has all of the podcast files organised into folders by podcast guest and the number of the podcast and the date that it's going to be going out. And within each of those folders, I have all the information that I need. So I have the outro that I'm just recording now for this week's, for example. I have the interview. I have the images that my VA has created. I have the original image that the podcast guest sends. I have the original interview and so on. All of those digital files are stored in that folder from the moment I start interacting with that guest. So they send me their information. I confirm when I'm going to interview them. I create a folder and I just shove everything in there so that it's all in one place. And then when we go through the process of publishing the podcast, my VA can find everything that she needs to pull it all together because it's all in one place. So my question to you is, are there areas of your life, your business, your desk, your room, your computer, your head (laughs) that need decluttering? And if there are, what's your plan to make that happen? And one of the things I talk about often is how you can do these sorts of things that seem like big projects in small daily steps and that's one of the things I've done with my digital files for example and I've also done this with my offline files when I used to have a lot of files with bills and things like that in them. I literally add to my to-do list a recurring task and every day I just sort out one folder and that can really help you to sort of work your way through this bigger project of organising all of your files and all of your folders, but doing it on a regular basis, just using very small chunks of time. So if you do have some decluttering to do, 
and you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by it, think about how you can break that down into, say, 20 minutes of daily action to get that done. If you're a member of my membership, Power to Live More Calm, then do know that there is a course in the learning section which is entitled How to Declutter Your Life. If you're looking to do some decluttering and you want a bit of inspiration and some step-by-step instructions, then hop along to the learning section of the Calm membership. If you're not yet a member and you'd like to give it a try, then you can go to powertolivemore.com forward slash get calm. And if you use the code my one trial, and that's with the number one, then you'll be able to get access for the first month to the membership site for just one pound. So that's powertolivemore.com forward slash get calm. And the code is my one trial. Thank you for listening to the podcast. It's so exciting to know that uh, we're heading to our 200th show. Uh, We've got something special planned for that one. So uh, keep listening. If you enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate it if you could share it with somebody, send them to the website or to any of the usual platforms for listening to podcasts. We're on all of them or pretty much all of them. And if you get a moment to pop over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review, then we'd really appreciate it. It's a really good way of letting other people know that this is a podcast worth listening to. Assuming that's what you think, of course. Again, the show notes for this week's show are at powertolivemore.com forward slash 197. And we look forward to speaking to you next week. Use your power to live more.